Welcome back to day three with uh, our agent and good friend, Mr. Sean. Thank you again for joining us for three days in a row um, so we can get this video out to you. And today's video is all about properties and um, can you own properties in Thailand? If so, what properties can you own? What's the process? And uh, are there any fees involved, taxes involved? All that sort of things if you want to buy to live in yourself, you want to buy uh, to rent out and make an income, or you just want to buy and then later on pass it on to your siblings later on down the road when you're no longer with us. So these are all the great questions that we're going to be asking Mr. Sean today on our final segment. And we will also be putting a link into the, his contacts and uh, details in the description down below along with a banner for his personal website because he's got a brand new website that he's just uh, built and put up and it's going to be finalized in one week. It is open right now to go ha take a look at if you want to have a look at, but he's going to be updating it with a lot of properties over the next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. And without further ado, Mr. Sean, thank you again for coming on today. My and pleasure. What is the name of that website? MirageGlobalRealty.com mirageglobalrealty.com and we'll be putting that up in yeah. a banner there for you. So let's get started on the final segment of uh, properties in Thailand. Can a foreigner own a condo in Thailand? Yes, he can. Right. It's possible. Uh, you can, uh, foreigners can own a condo in Thailand in their own name. Yes. Right. Now you have two different types here. You have what's called freehold and leasehold. Right. Can you explain what's the difference between the two? So freehold basically is forever. Okay. Yes. And leasehold, it's a land which is leased for, let's say, up to 30, ta uh, 30 years. Uh-huh. And usually can continue to lease up to 90 years. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that explains it perfectly. I never knew what the difference between the two was. Do you need to have a Thai visa or bank account to buy a property in Thailand? To open the bank account, you don't need any kind of visa. Right. Yeah, you can do that yes. on a tourist visa. Exactly. Yeah. Once a uh, yeah. contract is established, mm -hmm. of uh, a sale contract mm -hmm. of the condo you intend to buy. Right. And it's signed. We just present it to the bank and they open a Thai bank account for you. So pretty straightforward. Yeah, this is it. That's, that's the requirement. Of course, in order to do that, mm -hmm. let's say you are not in Thailand and you're overseas. That's the third question. Ah, the third. <laughs> get ahead of ourselves there. Okay. 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 Uh, so, and the third question is, can foreigner buy a condo in Thailand while they are outside the country? If so, what is the process? Yes, so uh, basically, like, like I said, uh, you don't need to be physically here. You don't need to be physically here. You don't need to be physically here. It's something that uh, actually was picked up during COVID times. Mm -hmm. There was a case where many people are overseas mm -hmm. and we will just be in selling condos over Zoom, over the internet. Uh -huh. And let's uh, simplify the process. It's you choose a condo that you like. Right. You need to secure it mm -hmm. with a deposit of, let's say, 50 to 100,000 baht. 50 to 100,000 baht, okay. Yes. So sort of 1,500 to $3,000, yeah. Yeah, and the condo is secured. Mm -hmm. Once the condo is secured, we prepare a contract mm -hmm. during one to three days. Once the contract is established, we sign the contract, mm -hmm. both the seller and the buyer. Right. Then we take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. The bank finalizes the account. Right. Once the account is ready, mm -hmm. we ask the buyer who is overseas to go to his personal bank mm -hmm. in America, anywhere. Right. And then he just moves the money. Mm -hmm to his Thai bank account. Now, right. very important, the money has to be in foreigner money. Yes. Dollars, yes. Euro, euros, rupees. They can't be in Thai bot. Ruble, whatever right. you like. Yes. And uh, yeah, so once the money is moved here, mm -hmm. 
we just prepare all the necessary documents, right? TT3, whatever it's uh, mm -hmm. all the stuff that we agents know. Mm -hmm. We go to the land office. Uh, so you have given us, of course, the power attorney to do that, to right. open back account, to sign instead of you. We mm -hmm. sign instead of you all the documents that need in the land office. Right, but the documents will be in my name. Yes. Okay, yeah. And we issue the uh, title deed for you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You are the new owner of the condo. We keep this title deed inside our office until you have arrived back home. Uh huh. And when you come over to Thailand, we just give you the title deed and it's yours. Or you can mail it out to them if they want. Or it. yes, we could mail it out. We, we could do whatever the customer wants. Okay. But it's uh, quite easy, very easy process. Yeah, because I mean, I, I've looked on uh, quite a lot of uh, new developments that are getting built and they have what they call uh, uh, pre-sales. So before the building is finalized, yeah. that you could buy them, you know, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, you know, w when the new development's happening and they're looking uh, for people that want to buy the unit. Off plan. Off plan, that's it. And you could buy off plan and you do tend to get a quite a bit of a discount. Exactly. From when it's finalized and people exactly. buy it when it's finalized. This is actually a trick that many investors use. Oh, what's they, that? They would buy a condo which is off plan. Uh huh. And of course, well, what the developer does, he gives a really, really good price in the beginning of the project. Uh huh. When it's off plan, he gives a really big discount to people to, to attract the investors to come by. Mm -hmm. And gradually, over three, four, every three, four months, mm -hmm. he increases his price a little bit, a little bit, ah. a little bit, a little bit. And so if you get in there when the beginning, you can get it cheap. And then when it's yes. finalized, you can sell it and make yes. a profit. Yes. So it's a kind of a good investment. I know people who are doing it many years, they're just buying when it's off plan. Mm -hmm. And after two or three years, when the building is ready, mm -hmm. they would just sell it. Wow. Okay. There is many people that, uh, you know, I know from my experience, when I take a new customer to buy a condominium, which mm -hmm. is in construction, usually all the good places, they are sold out. Really? All the, so like you wanted that corner room, yeah, you know, with a beautiful out. sea view. Sold out. It's already sold yeah. out. And then the customer is like, oh my God, what? I want I want this place. Right. Where, where do I get it? So that's when I contact these people who bought it two, mm -hmm. three years ago. Right. And then they sell it to me. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Happened to me a couple of times and yeah, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. Get in there quick. How long is the process to buy a condo? my fastest deal was five days five days yeah wow that's, five that's super quick but uh, let's uh, be realistic a little bit okay so what would you say the average is then one three to three days to establish the contract mm -hmm. signing going to the bank they open during one day the account mm -hmm. yeah so that's another day yeah, yeah. that's uh, let's say we are doing this all over the, during the middle of the week. Uh -huh. You still got one, two days up to the weekend. Yeah. You go quickly to the bank, mm -hmm. transfer the money. Yeah. We could do it uh, before the week is finished on Friday. Wow. Yeah. That is super quick. So you would say what normal time would be time frame? Let's be say one, one to week. Two, one week, one yeah. to two weeks? Yeah, one to two weeks. Yep. That's it. So let's go in a bit further. When you buy a condo, there are fees involved and that's what I'd like to talk to you about here because it's just not only the price of the condo. There are a couple of fees involved and the first one is the transfer fee and the sinking funds. Uh, what are they and uh, how does it work? Transfer fee tax mm -hmm. is uh, standard tax. Right. Everybody is paying once we transfer the title deed to the new buyer's uh, name. Okay. There is from the developer. Yeah. From the developer to each other. Right. Resale always needs to be a tax that needs to be paid. And how much is that tax? Up to five years since the last uh, transaction. Uh huh. It will be around uh, 6%. 
so let's say the people who are selling the condo mm -hmm. they bought it two years ago okay so the tax will be see around six percent okay. of the selling price okay let's say the condo been bought before more than five years mm -hmm. the tax is around three percent so it goes down yeah okay so the six percent um who's responsible for paying that the buyer and the seller 50 50. so they split it 50 50. Yeah. so uh if you're buying a brand new one from the developer the developer pays a three percent and you pay three percent if it's less than five years old half 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 yeah so which is the six percent yeah and then if it's over five years old it's three yeah. percent am i right and it's one and a half percent for the buyer one and a half percent for yeah. the seller so you split that even exactly okay and what about the sinking fund what is a sinking fund so sinking fund is basically like fun for a rainy day okay yeah let's say um okay you pay sinking fund by the square meter always okay when you buy from the developer you always pay by the square meter okay and it's only a one-time fee right and usually it's for rainy day when i say rainy day it's when i don't know i don't want to say natural disaster but this, okay. is, this is the money that's gonna cover the fixing of your right of your room anything that happens to your room by a third act yeah, lightning or whatever. Yes, yeah. this this is the money that it's going to fix your condo. Okay. Now, luckily in Pattaya we don't have any uh, natural disasters, but usually the case here in the city is uh, during the rainy season uh -huh. you got a leaky roof or something like that. Right. So they take it. That from would come covered from the emergency exactly. uh, from the uh, sinking fund they call it. Yeah. And um, how often do you pay that? Only one time only one time one time yes and uh is it based on the, the the value of the property or is it just based by the square meter based on whatever the developer decided okay <laughs> <laughs> give me give me a ballpark figure what somebody would pay for a sinking fund between 300 to 500 dollars per square meter per square meter bought yeah so 300 to 500 square meter. So if you got 100 square meters, you're looking at 50,000 baht then. Yeah. One time payment, yeah. and that covers you in the event of any unfortunate uh, mother nature problem that may occur, um, that uh, that's, you're not gonna have to pay out for a lot of repairs. That's your sort of insurance, I guess you would call it. Exactly. Your sinking fund is your insurance that's on your, your property. Insurance. Do you need to pay tax? What is the tax rate for owner renting out their condo? So if I bought a condo, I wanted to rent it out to you. Um, am I responsible for paying income tax on that in Thailand? Yes. And if so, uh, what's the rate? Yes, you do. So from zero to 150,000 is zero tax. Uh huh. From 150 to 300 is 5%. I mean, that's per year. Yeah. Income per year. Yeah. Okay. From 300 to 500, 10%. Uh-huh. From 500 to 750 is another 5%. Right. And I think when you reach 1 million, it's starting to jump. It gets crazy yeah. money then. If you if, well, if you can afford to pay a million baht a year for a condominium uh, <laughs> out here, I want to be your best friend. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Normal people renting out condominiums out here, uh, somewhere between 10 and 20,000 baht a month, say, uh, you're looking um, up to a maximum there, I would say, what, 5%? Yeah, that's it, 5%. Yeah, and if you're running it out for 10,000 a month, which is 120,000 a year, Zero. no tax. No tax. Because it's under the 150,000 threshold. Exactly. So there you go, you can do it actually tax-free. How is the Housing Association fees calculated? What are the average fees? Is there a sort of an average fee for that? And how is it calculated for housing association fees? You know, for the upkeep of the grounds yeah. and the security staff and all that, you obviously, the owner pays the housing association fees. I'm right, the tenant doesn't pay? It's the owner that pays it's for that? It's the owner who pays. Okay, so the tenant doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, all right, so 
older buildings, mm -hmm. it's around 30 to 35 baht per square meter. 30 to 35 baht per square meter. Newer buildings around 50, 55 baht per square meter. Okay. And so that's one to two dollars range, yeah. Yeah. Roughly. And let's say the ultra new new condominiums that they are making now so beautiful mm -hmm. they got uh, golf simulators they got saunas they got spa they got a bowling alley they yeah, got onsen yeah. and everything else yeah so, for the rich and famous yeah i like to call them <laughs> yeah basically these uh, buildings mm -hmm. they can go easily 100 to 130 baht per square meter yeah and that's uh per square meter per month yes so you pay that monthly so it depends really on the developer on how they decide some accept monthly mm -hmm. some they tell you to pay up front one year okay so say for example uh average one bedroom here in uh patia jomtian is about 35 square meter for a one bedroom right uh so 35 and you you work that out um at a dollar two dollars so you're looking around sort of, um, what are we talking, 35 to $70 a month? Yeah. Round about that figure uh, for, to cover the security and the groundskeepers. Exactly. Okay. Can a foreigner buy a house in Thailand in their name and lease the land? If so, for how long? Yes. It's okay. It's possible. My colleague, she said she has experience with this. Because that's something I'd be very interested in doing yeah. myself. If I can own the house in my name and just lease the land, um, heck, I'd be happy as Larry. Yes. I would like to talk to her a little bit more to okay. clear it. Maybe even invite her to here and explain how it's done. Right. We would also go to ourselves to the juristic office and the land office to check ourselves. Mm -hmm and no problem we could uh, make maybe another separate video and or even do a live stream yeah or even do a live stream and explain about it but yes it is possible so it is possible yes you can as a foreigner buy a house here but you can't own land that is the catch-22 as a foreigner here in thailand unless you have permanent residency or you became a citizen or you put it in a thai wife's name um, those are the only options to do it but there is a way that you can actually own the house and lease the land and the land's not in your name um, it could the land office could hold the the title for the land and if the law ever changes it can be transferred into your name so there is a way to do that. We're going to be doing a lot more research on that and a upcoming video. So stay tuned for that one. What is the process for buying in a company name? Uh, are there any protections? Are lawyers involved in the process? Yes, lawyers are involved. Um, let's say, all right, I will give you two instances. Mm. I'm a guy. Yeah. I like a house. Mm -hmm. The house is already registered in company's name. In somebody else's company's name. Exactly. Right? I want to buy the house. Yeah. Basically, all I do is go to the lawyer's office. Mm -hmm. We change the director's name to my name. Okay. So you become the director of the company. Exactly. Okay. And I own the company mm -hmm. which owns the house which owns the house. Yes. Okay, and with that, would you have to pay sort of, I don't know, uh, back in the West, we call it corporation fees for the company? Around 8,000 baht to change the name. That's it. 8,000 baht to change the name. And it's much, much easier than going to the land office. So about $400. Yeah. Now, there is another one. Let's say the house is in Thai name. Okay. All right. That's where it gets complicated. So that's where you need to go to the lawyer mm -hmm. and set up your own company. Right. And I will just give you the basics. The lawyer can explain it better. But when you set up a company, it's 49% mm. uh, foreigner, 51% Thai. Yes, Thai. Yeah. And you have to become somehow the majority shareholder. Right because you cannot own the company and the Thai is the owner. 
Okay. You want it to yourself, so you need to bring in two Thai shareholders, mm -hmm. and then they split the 51%, which is 25.5 each. Okay. And then you become the 15, majority shareholder. Exactly. You hold 49 shares. Right. Percent uh, share. So you're the majority shareholder, mm -hmm. and you are the owner of the company. And that's how you would buy uh, the Thai house and the land. Yes. So you would have to also to change from Thai name to company name. Mm -hmm. You would have to pay a uh, transfer. Eight thousand baht. Transfer fee. Oh, transfer fee. So okay. So it's uh, not uh, eight thousand baht. It's uh, what, like we said, mm. six percent, three percent. Is there any risk that they could sell um, the uh, the other two people that are directors of the company? I guess uh, could sell the property for out from under you. No, they cannot. They, they cannot. cannot because you are the majority shareholder. So you're protected under Thai law and also with a. Um, with a lawyer involved yes. in the whole process. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. What's the chances that law could change in the in the future? I know that's a loophole right now. You know, would the, would the foreigner then lose their property if they said, uh, "No, you can't do it that way anymore"? I wouldn't say that they would lose because there are so many people who are doing it. Mm -hmm. If something like this would happen, it will be a massive, massive blow to Thailand. Right. So many people that I know of own a house this way. I do like the, the first idea of owning your own home and just leasing the land, um, which you can do for uh, 30 years and it's renewable up to 90 years. And you could also pass that on to your siblings, your children, your wife, you know, and uh, they could keep the house as well. So it would cover the, your life and also their life. And that's something I am seriously considering doing. And also, I want to get involved in becoming a Thai permanent residency uh, with a green card, which will enable me to own the land in my own name anyways. And I think you're considering doing that as well, getting I permanent am. residency. I am, actually. Yeah. So we'll let you know how that turns out for both of us. And I would let you know about the leasehold thing, too. Yeah, okay. I really appreciate it. I'd love to make another video on it. What are the pros and cons as a realtor and a owner? As a realtor, um, I would say doing something that is not easy to do, mm -hmm. selling a property, it's not easy at all. So it gives you a sense of accomplishment, pride, Yeah, gives you confidence. Yeah. And pros of the owner is having their own place mm -hmm. to come to. A place somewhere to call home. Exactly. Yeah. It could be an investment mm -hmm. kind of thing. The cost of the condo here, you could find really, really nice condominiums for mm -hmm. $100,000. Yeah. With furniture includes. I know in US, when you buy a condo, it's much, much expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you get any furniture. It's just, yeah. it's just a house. So. Yeah. Many developments, they're already selling their condominiums ready for investing with fridge, with built-in furniture. Mm -hmm. and they can sort of come as a package, don't yeah, they? Affordable as much as they can for the people to rent it out already. Mm -hmm. Come, yeah. Uh, let's say if I wanted to do it in my country or mm -hmm. in any other Western country, I would have to gain some capital, a serious capital, and then ask for some kind of a loan, mortgage, mm -hmm. pay off 20, 30 years, you know. Here I can make, I can make, let's say I can make Western money, mm -hmm. good salaries, come over here, buy. I want condo here, a studio here, a two, bed, two bedroom here. This mm -hmm. is what my customers are doing. Right. And then gain a passive income of like 150,000 up to 300,000 a month. Wow. I know some people that has a portfolio of 20, 30 rooms really? inside the city. And all they do is, I'm coming here once a year, they are buying some property and renting it out. And are they rich people from Japan? <laughs> <laughs> from anywhere. Yeah. From anywhere. But uh, yeah, so that's the pro of, uh, of an owner in Thailand. It's mm. very cheap to own a property here. It is. Yes. yes. 
compared to the West, of course, that yes, is. Yes, compared to the West, you could uh, have as many as you want and you can rent uh, them out yeah. and enjoy the passive income and just live your life here on easy. Yeah. Collect the money and enjoy life. Yeah. And uh, the final question is, not only do you uh, deals in sales, but you also deal in rentals as well. Yes, I do. And is that both in condominiums and houses? Yes. Great there. And um, so you, you have the Thai style houses, um, as well as the pool villas and all that sort of thing? Pool villas, condominiums, townhouse, you name it. You name it, you rent it. Yeah. And you sell them. And I sell them. And you sell them as well. So um, there you go. Um, Darlene's gonna put a link to the description for, um, in the description for Mr. Sean's website. Will you be able to go and look at all his property listings? He and I are gonna be working together all next week and filming some houses as well as some condominiums for you all to see uh, what they have out here, uh, including some pool villas, I hope. Is that something that we're going to film next week? Some pool we villas? Will. We'll have some nice things next week. So it's going to be an absolutely fantastic week uh, coming up next week for you all to see. And um, if you would like to uh, have Sean on one of our live streams and ask him, as well as his, one of his agent colleagues, uh, some questions in regards to rentals, sales, uh, houses, condominium, duplexes, um, pool villas let us know in the comments below and we'll be sure to get them on the channel so until next time wherever you are good morning good afternoon good evening take care and god bless